Hi, I'm Levi Waldron, and I'd like to introduce you to Multi-Assay Experiment, a framework for the representation and analysis of multiomics experiments in Bioconductor. This work was funded by a U24 grant led by Martin Morgan with myself, Vincent Carey, and Casper Hansen as co-investigators. Multi-Assay Experiment is a Bioconductor package intended both as a platform for interactive analysis and as a base data structure for developing derived classes and methods for integrative omics analysis. I'll demonstrate some interactive analysis here in an RStudio IDE on an object representing several assays from the TCGA Adrenocortical Carcinoma, or ACC, study. First, I'll load the multi-assay experiment library and the small data set that's provided with the package for demonstration purposes. This is a subset of assays and genes from the full ACC data set. I'll note that the complete open access data set takes about 250 megabytes as a saved multi-assay experiment object on disk, but it's still completely usable like this for interactive analysis and memory. First, we can get an idea of what it contains by typing its name, mini-ACC. It contains five different assays here, an RNA-seq data set, just a copy number, reverse phase protein array for protein abundance, somatic mutations, and microRNA sequencing. You'll notice here these have different numbers of rows varying from 33 to 198. These correspond to genomic or other identifiers such as genes and between 46 and 90 columns because not all of the patients are assayed by each of the assays. Then the next thing I want to do is to see something about the patients included in this study. And this information is available through the call data function. I'm extracting the call data and using view to open it up as a spreadsheet. This is a data frame with one row per patient in the study and one column for each clinical and pathological variable selected from levels two through four TCG data with some additional data here at the end on subtypes and other things curated from the supplements of the ACC publication. These can be accessed with the dollar sign operator as with other data frames showing here, for example, the information on participants race. The experiments we've seen already, and we see that they are of several different classes. We have an expression set, a summarized experiment, and a matrix. In general, multi-assay experiment can support any class as long as it supports certain subsetting and dimension names and sizes operations. This includes these common bioconductor objects, but also objects for remote and on-disk storage for very large data sets. The sample map is a key innovation of multi-assay experiments, and this is a network representation of the relationships between the patient, shown in this primary column, across each assay and each column name. This allows the assays to each be of different sizes, to have missing data, to have replicate data or time series data, and for every assay to be linked uniquely back to one of the patients. With this harmonizing infrastructure, multi-assay experiment can provide simplified data management across different assays of varying sizes and completeness. I'll select the data available for two genes here, noting that if these were genomic range-based assays, I could do this by genomic range instead. Then I'll select only those node-positive patients across all assays, and finally I'll narrow down to the RNA-seq data set. These could also be performed together in a single operation. There are a number of other features for data management. One useful one is intersect columns, which selects only patients for which complete data are available for all assays and arranges assay columns in identical order corresponding to the rows of call data. Note this was done even though the barcodes are different for each assay. Intersect rows does the same thing for genes available across all assays. After you've performed necessary data manipulation on the multi-assay experiment, there are several methods for extracting and reshaping the data. Assays returns a list of numeric matrices extracted from the other data classes that were present. 
The long format and wide format functions are very useful for performing integration across assays and with the patient data. Here I'm going to subset the mini ACC object down to two genes and then reshape it as a long format data frame where we have the assay that uh, each measurement came from, the patient, the gene, the column name from the assay data set, along with the RNA-seq or uh, mutation numeric value, vital status, and days to death. This is a very flexible operation, making multi-assay experiment compatible with a wide range of statistical analysis and visualization packages. The wide format instead has one row per patient and one column per variable, so the survival information and then each gene for the copy number, mutations, and RNA-seq are a different column. Finally, I'll give an example of stringing some of these features together to perform a survival analysis. First, I'm going to select patients where survival outcome is known using the complete cases function. And then I'm going to reduce the mini ACC object down to data for the easy H2 gene only and convert this to a wide format data frame containing also vital status, days to death, and the pathology end stage. Then I'm going to create a new Y variable that is a censored time to event variable and add that onto the wide data frame and finally perform a multivariate Cox regression in which we see copy number not significantly associated with outcome, but log2 gene expression significantly associated and also nodal status not associated with outcome. I'll conclude by saying that this is a flexible platform for representing multiomics experiments in memory, on disk, and remotely for big data sets using an open-ended set of data classes. We've built multi-assay experiments for 33 TCGA cancer sites that are linked to from the package's development site at www.github.com slash waldronlab slash multi-assay experiment, and I'm quite confident that this is the easiest way now available to do general statistical analysis and visualization of TCGA data. I'd like to thank Marcel Ramos, who is the primary developer for this project under the link NY alias and to thank you for your time and say we look forward to your feedback.